Hey YouTube, just uh, working on the AC system here in this 2010 terrain, and this is pretty obviously the AC pump out of it. It is toast, I've already verified that, and I just thought I would show a quick teardown, sort of, on an AC pump. Yeah, not everyone's seen the inside of it. No, I'll, I'll admit I'm cheating here, I've already pulled all the bolts out and everything, so... Uh, yeah, whatever, I'm cheating. Deal with it. Sean squared up. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is the real short story of how you pull apart. And obviously this is this particular pump. They're not all the same, but they're pretty similar. Essentially, all you're doing is you're knocking the center bolt out. You remove the core of the AC clutch. There's gonna be a snap ring inside of here generally. Come on, you already came apart once. Do this again. Don't make me look like an idiot. Sometimes it's put up there. There we go. So that is obviously the pulley portion of the clutch. If you've got a really noisy bearing, you hear your clutch just rumbling all the time and it's really loud, chances are it's the bearing right here that uh, that's making all the noise. Just because it's on the outside, you're going to hear it. Then there's going to be another snap ring inside here, which lets you remove the electrical portion of the clutch. This is what actually engages it. Oh, there's the snap ring. Yes, they are a pain in the ass to get out. Where your connector goes on to. Then there's a bunch of bolts that go around here. Sorry, I keep checking to see if I'm in frame. I've never used this camera setup before, or this mic actually. Hopefully it sounds better. Anyway, see, so pop out all the bolts, which are these guys here. Uh, bear in mind, you do want to do this over an absorbent surface because there's a really good chance that this thing's going to have a bunch of oil in it. After you get all the bolts around there off, you can more or less just remove the end of the casing. You've got reed valves in here. If you're familiar with two-stroke motorcycles, same concept. So this is just a reed valve that happens to have five plates or uh, five valves in it. So you can see here where there's five of the 10 pistons. This is a little weird because I say 10, but there are actually 10 cylinders and 10 pistons. But as you'll see in a second here, the pistons are actually double ended. <clears throat> we'll just leave that one alone. So you can then, oh yeah, there's a few, there's a couple other bolts here, three in this particular case. You take those out and you can then remove, let's call it half of the cylinders. And then what you're left with is this. Now, if you're familiar with pressure washers, this is going to be very, very familiar looking to you because what you have here is usually referred to as a swash plate. Where are my pinkies touching? These are the pistons here. And as the shaft turns, the swash plate, pretty obviously, will turn in an eccentric manner, which then makes these five pistons go up and down. Now you heard me say it was actually a 10 cylinder because if you take the other end off which honest to god will just fall off you'll see that there's another plate amongst all the gaskets other end housing pretty obvious that's so just a sight class by the way so that you can uh, see the oil level here we have another plate with another bunch of reed valves lo and behold there's your other five cylinders with the other five pistons but wait a minute they're there too. That's because, here we go with the double entendres of being a double-ended. You have a piston. Come on. Come on. These are kind of stuck in here because this compressor is actually fragged. And 
there is a lot of crap floating around inside of it, so these don't exactly move as well as you would normally expect them to. There we go. I've almost got one out. There they go, all at the same time. So this is actually one of the pistons. And as you can see, it's a double ender. Now, normally, I just threw this together so that I could get this apart real quick without taking 12 years for the video. Um, so here's your other five cylinders, and there's your other, your other five cylinders over here. So you've got 10 cylinders, but only using five pistons. There are normally a couple of these little button guys here, which will sit here, and another one like so, and the swash plate. This is why I didn't want to put it all together, because it would have taken way too long. So when the shaft rotates, you can see that the uh, it's so gimped up I can't even turn it. This should be a highly polished smooth surface and it feels like I'm running my finger over uh, 80 grit sandpaper. Anyway, so as the shaft normally turns and uh, you know, you can kind of visualize the clutch and the pulleys rotating the shaft, which is rotating, sorry, which is rotating the eccentric, which is then moving the pistons up and down. So it's basically it's causing a suction or sorry, a suction event at one end while it's causing a compression. So it's an intake and a compression simultaneously and then each of those events is staggered because that plate is at an angle so it's sort of a, a constant perpetual intaking and compressing all at the same time very very short cycles in between i guess you could call it anyway uh we'll just move five of the little pistons out of the way here so as soon as i took this apart I decided, oh, there's something wrong here. Because I start as soon as I took the end off, let's see where I'm pointing here. I don't even know if we'll be able to see that. There. Hopefully that's in focus because I'm doing this not wearing my glasses. What you're looking at there is a tiny, tiny little and it's gone. Anyway, doesn't matter. Uh tiny little roller bearing. Here's a Another whole little handful. Anyway, these things were just all over the place. So at that point I saw it and I'm like, oh no, there's something really not wrong. I was hoping it was going to be something simple and I was going to be able to repair this compressor and save myself 400 bucks. Anyway, I got it apart. And uh, this is a Torrington bearing. They're very, very thin. They're meant to be used in a essentially a, a compressive loading situation. Uh, this would normally sit right like that and then as everything gets sandwiched together everything would be happy. There'd be another bearing right like that. Well I found this one in there and then um, yeah that's what I found on the other end. There's not a lot of left to him and that's where all those little rollers came from. So it's toast. Uh, when that bearing exploded, it uh, no doubt caused the shaft to cease rotating very, very quickly, which is why I can now spin the swash plate on the shaft, because it is no longer attached. There, uh, there would have been a shear pin going through here, and that would have sort of sandwiched everything together. I think there's actually two of them like that. Anyway, that would have kept the shaft rotating with the swash plate. So you can get the idea here where, again, you have all these pistons. There's no way I'm going to be able to move this, but they're all kind of going up and down. Well, oh, kind of nothing they are. They're just not doing it right now because I'm out of hands. But the pistons are all going up and down and up and down. And I sort of got to go in there now like so, and uh, compressing your free on. There you go. So that's essentially how this style 
of AC compressor works. There are other styles out there, uh, but this is pretty much how a pressure washer also works. Actually, you can see in here, because I never washed this out. Uh, there's a huge pile of boogers down in there, and you can see just how much debris happened. Where's my finger? There it is. So yeah, this, this right there, this is why if your compressor explodes in your AC system, this is why you need to flush your AC system out. If you simply pull your old exploded compressor out and you grab a nice new $400 pump and you throw it back in there, guess what happens? This thing starts compressing, which means it's also moving fluid around in a circle because that's how AC systems work. Well, okay, whatever. Technicalities of vapor and gas or a uh, liquid and a vapor. But point is, it is rotating all that crap that was just on the end of my finger. It's rotating that around and around in a circle. Some of it, yes, will get caught in the filter. You hope. But if some of it misses the filter or, you know, it's on the other side of the filter, for whatever reason, all that crap is going to end up down in here, and these very, very tight tolerant pistons, so tight that I can't even get this to go back in the hole. Uh, yeah, so all these very, very tight tolerance parts, there we go, uh, are going to cra trap all that crap, and it is going to destroy, probably, your nice, new, expensive compressor. And you don't want to do that. Waste of money. Uh, that's about it. So it, it also does give you an idea of how easy it is to just replace your clutch. So, you know, if the compressor itself is fine and uh, your clutch has packed it in for whatever reason, at least you can buy clutches independently. For the life of me, I cannot find internal components of these anywhere. If anybody knows where you can buy internal components, uh, I mean, they sell these things remanufactured. Somebody is buying parts from somewhere. I just can't figure out where. Uh, otherwise, you know, there's enough left here. I probably could have rebuilt it. Uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, this is with my new uh, little camera mount, because you notice I've got two hands free now. Woohoo! And I've got a cordless mic, which is hopefully making the sound better. And there's a little light up here, which is, uh, well, you know, doing what lights do and lighting the scene. So there you go. Hope I've shown you something, not bored the crap out of you. Uh, we will figure out something else to shoot an interesting video of here, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.